Hi, I'm Christian Guzman, and I approve of the Board Shorts and Banter podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Tom. I'm home alone, and I'm scared. I don't like it. Mic check, mic check. You're home alone? I'm home alone. Annabella's having a sleepover with the boss. No, that doesn't sound weird. Ooh, naughty girl. (laughs) Time for a promotion, is it? Yeah. (laughs) It's a girl, you horrible, horrible, horrible boy. Hi, Maka. Hello, how are you? Whilst Tom was being a rudy doody. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> nothing. You you see nothing. Don't worry about it. Just showing us how uh, he bagged the all in sponsorship. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had to, Josh... I had to download fucking uh, this on Chrome. Did you? Yeah, I, have, I use Safari. It was like, that, tell me to download it on Chrome. So I was like, I'll download it on Chrome now. Have you, have you ever been on a podcast before? Yeah. Uh, I just They normally do it through Zoom. Yeah, mate. Look at look at look how, how te- technical technologically advanced we are, mate. Very technical advanced. But right, Maka, we got to get the uh, we got to get the the single handed best bit of the podcast out of the way. All right. What we have a seizure on, on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No. That's not gonna be very good for the audio listeners. I, 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 I said to Maka, I was like, I was like, I was like, I hope you don't have a seizure on the podcast. I was like, no, actually do, <laughs> and it's, it's it'll be great for interaction. Definitely like a YouTube, uh, no, like a, an Instagram reel, you know, just Maka having a seizure. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, might last longer than sixty seconds, so it's not optimal for for Instagram. <laughs> but yeah, you know. uh, it lasts a minute and a half, so real it'd be a little bit. Little- Exact amount of real life time, isn't it? That's yeah. a long time. We'll, hey. we'll, all right, we'll, we'll delve into it in a minute, right? But anyway, what, Josh, what what tea have you got on? Oh, mate, I've got I, I've got a cool tea on, but I need to put my jumper on because it's cold. Okay, right. Well, anyway, people, so we are. I wait for Josh to get back actually because I don't know when. No, the the next launch is in like three days' time actually. But anyway, as you guys know, all in bodybuilding. If you want to get hold of the cleanest garments in the game, Macro, have you got any all in? I have not. I have not. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to grace you with some, mate. But I don't have anything that's probably I've gonna fit you. Um, but yeah, BSB, not BSB fifteen for. Ooh, ooh. You, you Who horrible you man. I, I literally saw that in the story, and I said, "Have I, have I ordered that?" And he was like, "No." Yeah. So I went and did the. Um, so sorry, Maka. We're just gonna. We've got. To, we, we haven't got to do this. I'm just gonna tell the listeners. We get so, told off if we don't do it, mate. We get whipped. Yeah, the the <laughs> latest launch of All In. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit like, ooh, am I going to love it? Am I going to love it as much as the last? And I went and did like the shoe. And literally I said to Dan, I was like, mate, I need, I need pretty much all of them. And he was just like, yeah, it's it's really good. So there's like a green sweatshirt, which I'm, I'm going to have. Brown t-shirt, which I didn't think I'd like, but I love. Black t-shirt and then cream long sleeve. They're, they're basically banging. They don't miss. They don't miss. <sighs> they don't. Maka, what's your what's your favorite clothing brand? Body, like bodybuilding, kind of. You know, I know you like you like uh, dark sport. I, I'm literally wearing dark sport now. I do like dark sport. I like I like everything about what dark sport do. Um, yeah. From like a marketing aspect, I think they they nail it. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. To be honest, man, I don't really wear like. Obviously, like, I'm sure you, like you guys are the same. Like you just live in gym clothes. Like, mm-hmm. like I'll wear like a whole host of gym. Like, obviously, when I first started getting into gym, it was obviously it was Gymshark. Then Gymshark became a bit a bit wanky, so I sort of just left that. Uh, <laughs> explosive fibers, wore some of that. Monst- like Monster Factory. I haven't I haven't got the bunda for explosive fibers, mate. I ain't, I ain't got the, I ain't got the batty for it, you know. The um the uh, what's it called? You know, like those baggy explosive fiber trousers that everyone wears. Mm. I, I've obviously got a couple of pairs myself. They do nothing for your physique, absolutely <laughs> nothing. They're just fucking bin bag. Can I swear on this podcast? Yeah, of course you can. No. Sorry, I'm just checking. Um, Every time you swear, you've got to donate uh, five pounds to a charity of your choice. Well, you're gonna be millionaires by the end of this podcast. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they they yeah. I, I kind of always wear every, everything. I don't really have like a one set brand. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Do you um do you, some well, cream by JP stuff as well? I want to get I want to get into some bits, right? But for the for the for the viewers, for the listeners, for the glorious BSB board shorts and banter community, pretty much the best community in the entire world. Introduce yourself, mate. Okay, so obviously, if you don't know what my name is, my name is Michael Morris. Uh, I am 26 years old. I am a mental athlete, amateur. 
I am an online coach, a men's physique posing coach. I run a men's physique stage short company called Legacy. And I am a dad, most importantly. I should say that first, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dad of the two. priorities, right at the bottom. Right at the bottom. <laughs> right at the bottom, also right at the top. No, I'm a dad He's of... Uh, the babies. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dad of two twins, a boy and a girl. Jesus. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that a, bit, that's, a, bit, that's a bit crazy at 26 years old, isn't it? I know, it's a lot. It's a lot to handle. It's a lot uh, to handle. I thought you was older than 26. I also, <laughs> when you said that you were 26, I was like, oh my God, Mac is 26. How old am I? <laughs> yeah, That's I'm how old I, you are. I got into bodybuilding. My first show was in 2020. Like, this is another thing as well. People think I've done way more shows than I actually You're a have. Baby, mate. I've done like, I've, only I've only done three shows. Three? Well, yeah, it's three technically, yeah. I've done yeah. like a couple of categories in each one, but like three actual shows. Wow. He, w- oh, he would have done more, but he just spends his time dancing in the he gym, did. posing. He doesn't actually train, he's he just posing 24 7. That's how, he built, that's how he's built all his muscle. <laughs> never trained in his life he just poses yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no oh, so um obviously you've been on prep my guy haven't you yeah well i was i'm not how how, how 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 has prep been up until recently? uh oh, god do you know what prep was honestly like one of the smoothest <laughs> it sounds so silly so just loud. uh it was one of the smoothest preps i'd had like it was we decided to just like pre-Christmas sort of do a diet like a mini sort of like diet just to sort of get into like a pre-prep phase mm. um so prior to that just so like a bit of context I was I could last compete in 2022 um and then from sort of June 2022 I was in off season from there um and then I was gonna prep last year but then obviously I had twins as well and I was kind of adamant that I could do both when in reality I probably couldn't so I got like four weeks into that which is like do you know what that's just not prep it's just not the point it's not the it's not the right time. So then we extended that off season, um, and then yeah, sort of November December time. It was like a sort of pre prep phase, just like a little, drop in a little bit of body fat, um, getting into like a healthy position, and then January rolled around, and then uh, we started prep. Everything was going smooth. Was dropping weight consistently. Was looking better and better each week, and then uh, six weeks out occurred, and uh, not the Thursday just gone. But the Thursday before, I uh, was training fast in the gym and uh, decided to have a seizure on the floor, which is uh, fantastic. You didn't, de- well, I didn't decide, just happened. <laughs> just, just randomly occurred. Yeah. I mean, again, a bit of context. So I've had two seizures when I was 18. Oh, um, wow. And I dislocated my shoulder in both of those. And then i that was through the seizure like i literally just ruptured it out of its socket basically what so oh you didn't like God. you didn't like fall onto it just from the no, seizure this was, it for this sure. was, I, so these first two seizures i was asleep um discated them so I discated once they put it back in place then they discated again and then i had another one when i was 19 when i was abroad uh on holiday luckily I had travel insurance it didn't cost me an arm and a leg um but again during sleep uh i was sleep deprived had been drinking the night before so they kind of like coincided the alcohol with the sleep uh, deprivation and kind of put that as a root cause and then fast forward seven and a half years later i decided to have another one so yeah it's it's just kind of like there's not much information on seizures like especially within the bodybuilding industry there's only like i've been speaking to one girl um an ip pro bikini girl who's also got the same sort of like symptoms that i've had in terms of like high basically what's caused the seizure we think is high stress um and it's hard because as i'm sure you guys are aware like you guys like pushing yourself you like you know just con- continually push pushing the limit but it's also like how do you measure stress how do you measure that or like quantify what that is like for me i have quite like a high tolerance so i didn't really think anything of it and um it's just got to a point where obviously my body couldn't hack it for whatever reason um because obviously when i prepped in 2022 there was no seizures involved so it's just, uh, it's one of those, it's a bit, it, it, don't get me wrong, it's disappointing. Um, obviously, we all love stepping on stage, like what, it's one of the best parts about bodybuilding, but at the same time, it's also like, <laughs> your health's more important in the day. So, yeah. um, mm-hmm. for me, I, if all goes well, and I recover well, and I'm feeling better, and, um, you know, everything's sort of aligning great, then I will potentially go compete at the back end of the year. But we, it's kind of like up in the air at the moment. Yeah, so... So yeah, nothing. Nothing's confirmed. It's just taken out as it comes. I'm assuming, obviously, you're back. Are you are you back and forth with doctors? Like, are you working with any any doctors on this? So, 
<laughs> so I, I was supposed to be getting my medication like a few days ago. Still haven't received it. Um, the hospital didn't send any notes over to the GP, so they've got nothing on me. Like basically, like it never happened. Sick. Um, so now I've been trying to ring the hospital today. Couldn't get through, so I'm gonna have to try again tomorrow. And uh, basically, I also I need like seizure medication just in case I, I was to ever have another one. It would kind of like potentially stop it to like eighty percent, ninety percent. That's what they said. Mm. And then when I had the seizure, I kind of like fell on my back. But when I was seizuring, because I was in the gym, I was able to see like the CCTV footage and like my body is just like convulsing like quite vigorously. That's but cool. you can like you see like how tight my back is from that seizure. Um, so ever since that, I've had like a, like a lot of pain in my right side, um, which is easing up. It is easing up. But like when <laughs> Gabby had a look at it, like, that's my girlfriend. Uh, had a look at it a couple of days after I had the seizure, and it was like, like you know, like your erectors, they were just like bulging of how like prominent the pain was. Um, yeah, but fine. since then, I, I had the, the the swelling has dropped off a lot. So I'm hoping, like I haven't trained since that that's happened. So I've been like, it's going to be two weeks on Thursday since I had it. I'm hoping towards the end of this week try and get back in the gym for the first time. Um, but yeah, from <laughs> from uh, not moving. Uh, for five days for that seizure, like post post that seizure, five days I literally put on about 12, 13 pounds just because I couldn't move. Yeah. So prep was never going to happen in that six week period after that. It was just like a case of just like put, put a nail in the coffin type thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, look, mate, that sounds absolutely horrifying. Like, I can only imagine how it you know, feels to be you and obviously your girlfriend as well. Um, oh, Hey, that, I, I didn't realize it was that bad. Obviously, I know that seizures aren't a good thing to happen. I, but... I agree because, like, before I saw that CCTV footage, when I was when I had them when I was eighteen, I never really put into context how like bad they can be. Mm. Um, like even like, when I had them pass, like when it when it dust has settled, um, when I was after I was eighteen and stuff, I'd just joke about it and stuff like that. I wouldn't really take it seriously. It was only when I saw this footage back of this most recent one, I was like. Fuck, it is pretty like severe. Well, mate, so, like, like you have zero control over your body. So imagine if, like, you were stood. I don't know. You were you were sat down, weren't you? So I just finished a set on the pec deck, and then I stood up, was like walking around, getting some steps in, like, as you do in your gym session, and uh, came like resting, rested on like this prime shoulder raise. Mm. But, yeah, it's prime shoulder press. And then all of a sudden, it's like my eyes are just drawn to something. It's like I got possessed, basically. My eyes are just drawn to something like that. And I look around, and all of a sudden, I just like start like doing that in like while standing up, and I just fall. But I fell between like two machines, so I'm very lucky that I didn't like fall and smash my head into a machine or a plate. This is or what I'm like saying, that. man. Like you've got. Yeah. Do you know, like when you, do you know, like you say to someone like, "Oh yeah, you know, fall over and don't put your hands out," but like you yeah. instinctively put your. If you're having a seizure, mate, you're just gonna hit anything, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, it I was, was very so lucky, lucky that I fell because I almost fell like on my shoulder. So I fell like almost like a half, like you know, like when you break a fall, you like slap your arm out or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like, had like all that already. Like my arm was already half in place. So I fell on my shoulder. So kind of like softened the blow a little bit. But yeah, I'm, I'm just lucky I didn't smash my head into a machine or like. It's, it's your, your, with your doubts, mate, like I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if there was like an airbag that just deployed on, <laughs> yeah. on your on your way down. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, don't the don't sustain law, thank God. Oh yes. my god. Yeah. Um so in term in terms of like uh so you're working with you're working with Tim. Yes. Now, aren't you? Yes. And how so was, how has um, that been? Yeah, so I was with um I was with Callum Raystrick for my twenty twenty two season. Um the entirety of that. I then had a little bit of break just to do my own off season. I then went back with Cal, then left Cal. Um, no real reason, just financially, like I was paying a lot of money and, uh, that was kind of the end of it. Like, I just paid a lot of money for what I was getting. Let's just leave it at that. And, uh, I then, me and Tim, obviously like Tim sent me a lot of his posing clients. We kind of just got talking and it was just kind of like a gradual sort of, what's the word? Um, connection. Yeah. Connection, like progression, like it was just kind of like natural. So and organic. And then it just sort of thrived from that. And then, yeah, as, um, Tim's obviously very good at what he does, and um, I'm I'm just excited to see what we can do when we eventually get on stage. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. one. Of, but Tim's been really like really really supportive. Like the, f- the first thing he happened, like when it first happened, 
straight on the phone, messaging me, contacting me, like make sure I was all right. He was like, mate, do not stress about prep. I don't want you to stress about anything. Just make sure that you're okay. And obviously you spend time with your family at this moment in time. So yeah, that, so Tim has been with me. I've been with Tim since November or so. Mm. Pretty much when I started that pre-prep phase. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that this prep was like your easiest prep so far. What what's what's been the difference then between what Tim's done with you versus what Cal's done in the past? Think, like as you know, like no two preps are ever the same. And I think the fact that I had more muscle this time, um, I noticed that like it's very weird. Like normally my front always comes in the quickest and then my back catches up. I'm not sure how you guys are. But this time around it was like my back because of the amount of muscle I put on my back from it being a weak point, it was like that was coming a lot quicker this time. And my front wasn't too far behind in terms of like the speed that they were both going at. Um, I think also I wasn't doing as much cardio. Um, steps were pretty low, like they were 10K, whereas with Cal, they were a little bit higher, maybe like 13, 14K. Um, food wasn't drastically low. Like I felt I wasn't, I wasn't for about 10 to 12 weeks, bear in mind, I've been started dieting from almost November. I didn't really get that, like those hunger feelings. Like the only occasion, like in the morning, I'd get like a few hunger, but I'd, get to, I'd go and then train. Then I'd have my fast, my meal after that anyway. So I, I never really experienced that hunger. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's just been, it sounds silly because I, it's, the, it's, it's the least stress I felt, but obviously not. Mm. So it's kind of something I need to figure out and me and Tim need to figure out in terms of how we manage that going forwards. Yeah. Um, just in terms of like, obviously me being assisted with certain drugs that we use, the, the lipolytics that we use in terms of things causing too much um, of the nervous system to basically fire at, fire at certain different points. Mm. I need to be like, for example, like clenbuterol, how much clenbuterol I use, that probably needs to be tapered down, those mm. types of things, because obviously they can all impact it. But yeah, like generally I, I, felt, I felt pretty good and I didn't feel like I was doing massive amounts. I was doing... At the start of prep from January, I was doing three times 20 minutes. Then that went up to three times 30. That stayed up there for like another six weeks. And then it only just gradually got up to uh, four times 30. And then it went up to six times 30. And I think because of that nice gradual process and I was getting leaner, I never really felt like I was in prep, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Interesting. But it's like, uh, <clears throat> so then in comparison then in your first it's it's one of them because i feel like maybe for instance like maybe you were pushing your body quite hard but i feel like your one of your first preps is always like your hardest just because it's also mm. novel to you it's, it's also new, new. Yeah. and it's one of those things where like you know you get used to that level of stress and you get used to that level of like output so therefore yeah, yeah like you you were able to cope with it but maybe you know it was actually more stressful i think as well like it's also the first time i've ever prepped having a family so mm -hmm. that's obviously like a big adaptation and gabby like gabby even said to me like you've de you dealt with this like much better than what i expected you to do and for me like they're they are the priority now so like bodybuilding has to coincide with that like that doesn't mean that they can't both coexist but for my family always comes first but she was like quite surprised with how well i dealt with it like i wasn't like being moody like if gabby needed me to feed the kids or look after them while she goes to the gym like it was absolutely fine like, that's because that's what a dad should be doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like it was never really like a case of oh like pat on the back for doing this do you know what i mean it was just like i just it's just one of the things you, you deal with um but maybe again because it's like like tom how you're saying in your first prep it's all everything's also novel that's novel to me in terms of ha having a family so maybe that's something i need to just try and formulate a plan in terms of how we attack it going forwards. Like maybe that my training times have to change to accommodate that, or my cardio has to change to accommodate that. So, because I always like I I don't know how you, about you guys, but I like training fast in the morning. Like I saw that's how I've always trained, even in off seasons. So I, I tend to backload my food and I train in the morning with energy. Mm, and then, I'm like, that, <laughs> but the the funny thing is, the couple of times this prep where I did have to train in the afternoon because Gabby trained in the morning, or whatever, or had other commitments i also felt really good so maybe that i, I quite i quite enjoy training with food in me so that's another thing that could potentially change so for me it's just about this whole new learning experience that i'm gonna have to delve, delve into and try and find a solution to it because at the end of the day i'm still gonna compete like it's still what I'm gonna, i love doing so um but first and foremost obviously it's my health and just make sure that's all right yeah if you ain't got health mate you've got nothing and that's that exactly exactly 
Wow. So, well, in, mad. Do you know the um, you know the first time you competed, Maka? Was it back in 2020? Yes. Yeah. It was, yeah. was it was it the shows that were like in lockdown or just before? No. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the tent one. It wasn't the one with in the field. Yeah. The tent. It wasn't that one. Don't worry. It was uh, two rose so, fest. It, oh, yeah, God, that was awful, wasn't it? Um, it was the so there was only one show, and it was two rose Watford Pump House, and it was the I think it was like middle of September, and basically nice. they said so they secured a venue like a theatre, but it like the way they did it, like so no one could be in the audience. Yeah. And every time there was a class that went in, like let's say it was bikini girls that went in first, all the males, everyone else, all the fe- other female class, the male class had to stand outside. And then every, like let's say the men's went in, then everyone else has to stand outside. So like, there was never like two classes in the building at once. Um, so it was a very weird show. Like it was no atmosphere. It was just kind of dead. But I was, I'd been prepping for a long time. And then obviously lockdown happened. All that sort of stuff happened. I was still adamant I wanted to compete, so I just prepped for a lockdown. Um, paid extortionate monies to private, like, shed gyms and all sorts, and paid, like, I think it was, like, £15 a day to go and train at some shed. But to, hell. To, to, to my luck, it was kitted out really well, like, Cybex, Nautilus, uh, Aland- like, it was good kit, but it was um, extortionate pricing. And uh, so, like, my savings just went down the drain, basically. You, and uh, you, so, you've yeah, never, like, you've never experienced like a proper show, like, as in you compete. Like, yes, like a proper show, but I mean, like, with a normal crowd and stuff like that. Have you? Well, no, I competed in twenty twenty two, didn't I? Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you are fake. <laughs> Do you know what it is? I haven't had my cookie dealer today. My, my blood sugar is oh, low. Daily cookie dealer. Hey, Tom. <laughs> Um, can you turn yourself up a little bit? Because Mac is quite loud and you're quite quiet. Am I quiet? Yeah. Is that better? Oh, that's better. That's is that off. better? It's like cool. Music to my ears. Um, um, cool. Yeah, because I, I I competed with two bros in that in that like year of COVID, and it was it was very weird. It that was, was weird. that was the year that I got the the JT Shake on uh, drugs test. Yeah. Yeah. So was that a, was that a bro work? No, sorry, what's that? Was that a Braywick Ledger Center? Uh, no, it was. I think it was in Watford. It, it probably was. Maybe it was the same show. And, it, and the the they had like all the men's physique people in like this little sports holly bit. Yeah. Really like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because you because yours was a natural show. Mine, mine was a natural show, but I think it was at the same venue. Man, that was, you yeah, you, de- you definitely weren't there, Mac. Your doubts are way um, too big, mate. Because I competed against like IFBB pros, but Hader and uh, Tyler Smith. That was the level of the athletes. So they, so Hayda turned a pro a year later. Tyler Smith turned pro at that show. Um, yeah, because basically, because it was the only show across the year that obviously open, they just hosted it as a British finals with a pro card. Mm. Really? So I was, yeah. gonna, I went up like, in juniors. Like there was some like Slovakian like world champion and all sorts. Like there was some prop, like right mix of athletes there. Oh, Maka, if you'd have done PCA UK Open that year. We'd have gone against each other. Uh, there's That'd all, have been I mean, cool. There's probably never time because you're never, you're obviously going to stay nay. Obviously. And, obviously. <laughs> and uh, I'll always stay assisted and won't be able to come in as much anyway. So. Oh, but, mate, I'll just do an assisted show, bro. It's all good. Oh, yeah. We'll do, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> I'll do two bros. <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Get the JT shake. <laughs> well, you, no, you won't get it. You won't get it. Don't no, need it anymore. Uh, he'll probably just like impersonate me having a seizure. Are you having a seizure? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> really covered my computer. Cheers, Mac. Yeah, if, if you uh, if you look closely at the CCT footage of you having your seizure, there's J- the ghost of JT just shaking you about. <laughs> no, no, no. What's going to happen? Mac is going to walk into the middle of the stage to do his individual routine, full on have a seizure, and everyone's going to be there like, is this part of? This is part of the routine. Because we've just had a guy doing a moonwalk. <laughs> I swear the routine is only supposed to be 30 seconds. Why is he going on for a minute? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I quite Jesus. like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna mark him highly for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Um, um yeah, that was the only show I did. And uh then from there I took a year about 13 months out, 14 months out, I think. Um and then, yeah, I competed in 2022. 
And then another one won three shows in that. Ooh, okay. three shows. So I did I did two shows, but three classes, three or four classes. And so the first show I played second, losing out to the guy who won the overall. And then who? What? Drop his name. Oh, what's his name? He's a what is his name? He's coached by Jace Mel. Mel. Oh, I think Mel I Mel. know who you mean. Really nice guy. I think he's natural as well. Um, really? You got beat by a natty, that's awkward. Yeah, I did fuck <laughs> up. Like so, and uh, yeah, I should I, I should have beaten him, to be fair. I did mess up my posing. Um, you, 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 you're you're waist, you, that, you're you're waist, you're waist, you're waist was 20, 22 inches instead of 20, mate. Oh, yeah, my well, waist wasn't small enough. And uh, then the f- I did a show two weeks later. Um, did Novice... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just did novice and open, and then I won the overall as well. So I won all, all, both of those, and then won the overalls there. And then for me at that point, it wasn't really a case of like going to pro qualifiers because I knew I was probably just going to get smoked. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was just a case of just, okay, tick the box. Let's move back into off season. And yeah. then um, yeah. I took about eighteen months out now in total. Uh, well, it's probably going to be more now by the time I end up competing. Um, and then obviously this year, hopefully at the end of the year, I'll be competing in pro qualifiers. And we'll just sort of see how close we are. And uh, again, we'll just take each show as it comes. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully like competing internationally for the first time. That's what I really want to do. Nice, nice. I think like it might sound a little bit weird now, but in time, I think you'll be grateful for mm-hmm. everything that happens. Like you, yeah. you'll be able to manage stress better going forwards, like inside and outside of bodybuilding. It's all, it also gives me more just time to grow as well. Yeah, like, yeah. Obviously with the assistant side of things, you can put on muscle... Uh, quicker rate um so hopefully like because i'm still dieting now a little bit like i'm just trying to take off that weight that i put on from not moving yeah um so i'm down like 10 pounds since last monday so it's coming off pretty quick now bear in mind i can't train i can't do cardio uh, can't do cardio so i'm just doing steps so i'm aiming to get to like just below 200 pounds and then just push back up have a couple of poses and then uh yeah yeah 200 pounds you know (laughs) Just casual. <laughs> just casual. Tom, Tom's dreaming of getting to two hundred pounds one day. What oh, I'm in pounds. I do. I'm a I'm a kilos kind of guy. So I'm currently eighty two, aren't you? Eighty three. So you're like one ninety. Yeah, in... not far off. I'm a hundred. No, I'm hundred. I'm a hundred and eighty two pounds. You are. Josh, you're quite heavy, aren't you? Yeah, I'm right, fat bastard, me, mate. Josh has got, <laughs> Josh has got like a blocky waist and thick lot, joints, and you know, so yeah, I'm shit. <laughs> I'm 194 pounds. Is that where you are now? Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never been. I don't think yeah. I've ever been. Uh, a bit below to 200, and then just start pushing back up and have a couple of growth phases, and then hopefully, yeah, go back in the end of the year. Nice. You know, yeah. I think I'm going to be prepping. I've got a holiday in September, which isn't ideal. Where, where are you going on holiday? Uh, Gabby's family have paid for us to go to Mallorca. So. Oh, nice. You'll be you'll be fine as long as it's not like a third world country. It is self um, as well, so I can get my own food and stuff. Yeah, that yeah, might. and like they'll have decent gyms in Mallorca as well. So yeah, I, like I've I've done many holidays whilst on prep, and I've always found that it's it's almost helped in one one way or another. Like you know just being solely focused on the day-to-day rather than like, you know, just mundane shite of life. Um, and then also just being able to chill a bit more, you know, like having more naps or just being in the sun. I saying, yeah, I was saying to Tim, I want to get to a position where I'm, because after that holiday, I'll be like three weeks out from the first regional. So I kind of get to a point where I'm pretty ready or thereabouts on holiday. Then I can actually re- like completely drop stress from my yeah. body. That would be ideal mm. for me. Um, and then obviously it gives us another like six weeks, eight weeks from that point once come back to then go into those pro qualifiers as well, where oh. I can reach up and up for. So it should. perfect. Yeah, it should pay, it should pay well. Um, but yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Like I said, Everyone. like what you said, everything happens for a reason. So yeah, yeah. you'll be you'll be getting so many stares at the pool as well, mate. You'll be, <laughs> walk, you'll be walking around with your babies right in each hand like that. Yeah. Just like waist, like 21 inches. Your shoulders are as big as your children. 
right and then, and then yeah. like vascularity in your arms as you're just holding these two babies mm-hmm. whilst in the other hand you've also got like maybe not a pina colada because you're on prep i was going to say pina colada yeah, that's my favorite yeah. favorite drink on holiday yeah but do you know what i've got right now pina colada uh hydromax Elite. oh right I'm so good hydromax, hydromax. Is it good? yeah 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 oh so good mate so my- so good do you like the the cheap cheap Nasty pina coladas you get on holiday. It's like you ever, one of them. You ever used to get those ones from like the? You know, they just press out of a jar like a button. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It's like yeah. that. But I don't mind Should that. Try it, but it tastes good. Yeah, Josh. Josh is a bit too bougie. Um, I'm gonna say I've never there. seen that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Josh, like, moldy Josh is always like you know properly made in the bar like. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. With it, all the pineapples are from Mexico. Yeah, what was yeah, yeah. Your, um, drink of choice in Jamaica. You heard Jamaica, was it? Uh, I went to Mauritius. Mauritius. Uh, my my drink of choice was Shandy. Shandy, yeah. Yes, Shandy. What else did I have? I had a few aperols, mate. You know, a, a nice aperol spritz. Aperol spritz, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then... Very manly, very masculine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you know, I have a Shandy, you know, please? And an aperol. Like, have you have you had Pims? Pins, yeah. pims and lemonade that's good lemonade. i like a good pims actually refreshing mm. oh yeah oh yeah baby uh so maka right spoke about you competing yeah you are a posing coach you I are am. one of the best posing coaches in the country when did that kind of like start happening when did it take off firstly thank you for that i uh i don't really see myself as the best i just like i as you boys know i love men's physique. it's like the best thing it's like football to me. I fucking love football. I love Men's League. I think it's Men's League's been around for like 10 years and it's going to be in another f- 10 years, 20, I think it'll be like up there with like one of the most watched if it's not already volleyball in classes. Um, posing wise, like it came about last year when I won the overall uh, in 2022. Um, me thinking no- nothing of it, I just posted like my posing routine um, from stage, obviously onto Instagram and people like, just started commenting or, or messaging me like privately, just asking, like, how do you pose like that? And I said, I just basically, I was taught initially, but then I've kind of picked up things and just almost taught myself as well at times. Mm-hmm. And then it was, it was actually Lewis, um, who Tom's coached by. Lewis basically had a client, Joey Bennett. I'm not yeah. sure if you've, but you've heard of him, Tom, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, so he um, Lewis sent Joey my way. And I wasn't even offering posing at the time. But then I, I decided once Joey messed me across DM, I was like, okay, I'll make like a posing application and stuff, uh, application form and stuff. And then it just kind of took off from there, like little bit by little bit. Um, obviously, as I'm sure you got boys are aware, like once you start getting results as well, it just sort of picks up. Yeah. And um, I'm now lucky enough to work with a lot of guys. Like I put like over 50 people on stage last year, a lot of wins. I think we took home like 49 wins across the board. Oh, um, that'd have been so nice if you'd have got 50 wins I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping who number 50 is going to be that's my um, fault mate that's my fault for missing out on the WBF you picked up an overall mate you're fine <laughs> Tom you missed out on the UK the FBA PCA oh, WNBF yeah. second, second place at the British finals um, at the UK the FBA but yeah like, it just picked up through like just constant results like people and then I now like a lot of coaches do send people my way so like Jace sends all his clients my way. Um, Tim obviously sends all his my way. I have pro coach sending a lot of mine. Um, Corey from Raw Coaching, Slee Raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guys. send them your way. Yeah, Tom sends me my Like, there's a lot of guys who I'm grateful for. So, um, but yeah, like, I don't look at it as like being the best poser, like one of the best poser coaches in the UK. I just love the sport and yeah. I'm passionate about like the standard of men's league athletes. So, if I can help that, then that's all I care about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, Macker, I think you are the definition of someone where it's not just about the skill level of your coach, which you've got very high. Like your attention to detail when it comes to posing is like, I think, unmatched personally. Like just like your passion for it and your attention to detail. But not only that, you're just a sound guy. Like you're yeah. such an easygoing, relatable guy. Like for instance, when was it? At the Northerns show, you could FBA. I left my shorts back at <laughs> back at the place back at our uh, Airbnb and Maka, bless him, went back to the Airbnb just to get my shorts, just so I wouldn't get stressed out and, you know, 
overthink things and it's just it's just little things like that mate and like even just like messaging and checking up on you know your your clients and whatnot like that's why i always recommend you mate and uh you know you every like bit of success that you've had over this last year mate you really 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 do deserve it mate you really Thank do you, I appreciate that. like i said it's just i just a hugely passionate about it. And I, like as we all know like I, you, you boys love the sport as much as i do i just want to see it grow and prosper mm. i do think like as a whole now, I, I don't think it was like this before. Like for me, there was only like, before there was made like one posing coach in the UK, men's league guy, and that was Isaac. And now yeah. it's kind of flourished where there's a few good guys. And for me, like, I don't see that as competition. I just do my thing and I let people like come to me. If they want to come to me, that's fine. Um, and I'm just happy that the standard across the board, across all federations, not just like PCA or two rows or whoever it is, it's improving as a whole. And that's kind of what I like because I, I when I go and watch a men's league show, I'm sure you will say, like, you want to see good poses, you want to see good stage presence, you want to see good physiques. Yeah. There's nothing worse when you see a physique that's so good, but the posing is so poor. Yeah. So for me, like that's that's the most important thing. Nice. Yeah, good man. Good man. Uh, and then another thing which I want to pick your brains on mm-hmm. is the old posing shorts, mate. The board shorts. Yeah. So How did we- that come about? How's that come about? So I spoke. I wanted. To, I wanted to do it for a while, purely because I don't, you wear Ulta, don't you, uh, I Josh? Do. I do. So I, I've never wore them. I've only ever wore Trulers before, uh, and or Dark Sport. Dark Sport shorts in the back in the day were really nice, but now they're a bit. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Mac, then, Mac, Macca just loves paying import tax. Yeah. Like, he just <laughs> loves it. So like Wait it, nine months. In 2022, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to buy another pair of board shorts. I might as well buy two pairs because I've got to ship them from America. Um, and at this point, I think Gerald had released a few like Vaser ones. But again, there wasn't like, there's was only like Gerald or uh, Ulta or there wasn't really many UK brands. There was that show shorts, which I don't, I don't really like theirs. So. They're gone now, aren't they? I don't, I don't no, think they're still about. about. Just about. Um, they're still about. Yeah, I think so. Hey, it, the, uh, if the owner of Show Shorts is listening, we'd also like to invite you onto the podcast to find out what the frigging hell you're doing because your shorts are shit. Carry <laughs> on, Michael. <laughs> um, so it got to like, <laughs> middle of last year, and I was like, you know, I'm just, I'm just start a company. But it had been in the process since for about a year or so, like just sampling shorts and different different pairs and everything like that. It took us about. About to say about a year to get the final, like the first sample that we were actually happy with, or like the final one, and then we started producing them, or say selling them at the end, back in the last year, and I think we sold like seventy to eighty pairs, some pre-orders, but mostly through the website. Um, so we sold about eighty pairs, I think, in total. Um, That's awesome, yeah, mate. going really well. But I, again, it's just more of like a side hustle. Just really enjoy, like, yeah. it's, quite, it's like it's new for me. Like I've never. In school, I was never like a um, like a tech design guy or nothing like that. I wasn't into te- like fabrics or anything like that, fashion, nothing like that. So for me, it's like it's 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 new. It's it is stressful because it's, again, it's like I'm, I'm never, I haven't been in that industry. Like the first problem we had was just like shorts would fit people really well. Then some would be a bit baggy, and I'm, and I'm like I'm annoyed at it, but it's like not my fault because their legs aren't really well developed. So it's kind of that issue. So then. Over time, we've then shortened the shorts a little bit, so they're now like 16 inch rather than 17 inch. They're a lot; the material is a lot more like lycra type material, so they're yeah. like really stretchy, um, and they mold more to the majority of physiques. So, like a size 28 and a size 26, there isn't much discrepancy apart from the waist size. But like, let's say a size 26 wants to wear a size 28, they would generally still fit quite well. It just depends if you want like a really tight look or just a fitted look. Um, so yeah, no, they're going really well. Um, it's it's hard coming up with like different designs because yeah. a lot of people like simple designs and a lot of people like like quite wacky designs so it's just kind of f- trying to find like a happy medium for everyone um mm. but yeah it's going well mate it's going well like we're not even a year into the business yet really so yeah um yeah. Like I said, it's just one of those side hustles that hopefully it takes off um but i'm enjoying doing it so that's the main thing but mate <clears throat> it's one of those things as well as like as a as an online coach because obviously i know you're an online coach but as a posing coach as well I know of online coaches that upsell products, but maybe are not the uh, the best kind of products to upsell. But in terms of like yourself, then mm. you can push clients towards like your board shorts. And if you're creating yeah, some of the nicest board shorts in the game. Kind of like, 
So like posing a lot of guys who are in a composing are like, oh, like what shorts should I buy? Oh, like, what shorts? What shorts? What shorts? Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Here you go. You know. Um, but again, I don't just offer mine. I do. I do say like go and try a, f- a few pairs. But like these are my, are my brand. If you want to try these, and nine times out of ten they do stick with me because they want to support me. Support me with, or Hader, which is cool. Um, so yeah, I run it with Hader, um, IP Pro Hader. Oh, All right. Um, but I've done like mo- I say most of the legwork in terms of like design, getting the brand out there, supporting the, the socials, everything like that. But yeah, it's going well. It's going really well. Thank you for asking. Cool. So. I th- I- I think next of. year when me and Tom are back on stage, I think we need to do like a collaboration pair. Or yeah. short and banter in Legacy. Yeah, we can do that. That would be sick. That would be my dream. Do oh, Legacy all in BS and banter. <laughs> wow, really? all of it. It's just all of our faces, like a little like patchwork of our faces. <laughs> That'd be sick. Yeah. No, but yeah, or or we could have... No. Right, so we've got to do a Krogan edition. We've got to do Stockton edition. Krogan is like the top Absolutely. part of the board shorts. We've already discussed this, Josh. The top part of the board shorts is like it's beer foam. froth. It's yeah. like the foam. And then it like tapers down like an ombre style Into when it's like pint. pint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's funny? I've seen Trula do a pair like that. Oh, and that's the other thing as well, right? Trula blocked me and blocked Legacy. Really? Ah, oh, little, little bitches. Yeah. Oh, I says that they 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 can't be. They've also got, uh, Gerald and Vaso as well. Really, I'm going to yeah. comment on all their posts tonight before bed. I'm just going to comment at Legacy, whatever it is. What is is Gerald blocked you? No, no, Gerald, you Wally. Gerald's been blocked. Oh, I was well, about to say. Because me and Gerald to... always joke like we wouldn't design those to these shit designs, and they're just like <laughs> the, the Pac Man ones or like. These have been like weird Aztec pattern ones they've got, and yeah. I do you know what I I I think board shorts and what shorts you pick. A lot of people say, "Oh, it doesn't matter." It does matter it does if you're well. going on stage with fucking Pac Man, <clears throat> Pac Man, whatever, Pac Man, Pac Man, Octopi, um, on your shorts. It's like, why? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like personal preference. Do what you I want. Was, but yeah, I whatever. Know, I but, like colors. I'm quite a bright color person. I like simplistic designs, but like with a bright colour to it. So I, I, I do quite like wearing black. Um, what colours did I wear last time? I wore blue and yellow ones last time. Or white, blue and red. Okay. And I, can see, I can see your stage photos in my mind. The holding a sword. Yeah. You've got a sword as well, haven't you? I've... <sighs> yeah, Tom's got a sword. sword. What's wrong with me? <laughs> You've got a WUP Pro card, mate. Yeah, I think one of those. You say this every time, Josh. All right, get out of it. Um, okay, so I've got this theory, right? That if you were to like take all of the men's physique titles that is that have ever ever been won, blue is the most winningest color. Yeah, I'd say so. We did some. I actually looked into it a little bit. So I looked at like the top ten Olympias of the last three years. Um, and mo- I've said a majority of them were wearing like a blue shade of something. Mm. I w- why do you think that is? I think it's just it's just a nice. It's, it's just I think it makes the tan pop. Yeah, it makes a tan pop, especially if the blues like Josh's shorts in the back. If the tan's light and you got the glaze on you, it does just pop, make the color pop more. Yeah. Um, I find I'm trying to think what colors don't really go well on shorts. Why? It- I I think so. Like when you when you look at like ASOS, right? Mm. Or you look at like these people that work in like the fashion industry. You look at any kind of like colors on like ASOS and the model. Usually, the clothes that they're wearing like match their complexion, their skin tone, right? Yeah. So I think blue goes with people with darker skin, people with lighter skin. It pretty much matches everyone. It's but then you got some, you got some, you got some colors like orange, for instance. If you've got I don't, you know, or even like green. I don't think green is going to suit guys that have got very, very fair skin as much as green on like a, a darker skinned guy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I think I, like your, I comple- your, comp- your, your, your complexion is like quite important. Did you wear green? Yeah, I won the world's in green. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to have a look at that actually. PCA? Yeah, um, I'm trying to think what color. I think white is a bit of a weird color. White is a weird one. White weird. gets 
ruined as well by we tried, we tried selling white pair and they didn't do as well as like the blue ones we had the black and blue ones we had um they still sold but just no way near as much as the other colors and i think it's for that reason i think white is just such a hard color because you can't get tan on it if you get tan on it it just looks mucky it looks unprofessional yeah mm. um and yeah i think as well like white sometimes under lights can you can see underneath the short which isn't great oh <laughs> yeah so. You've got a tiny cock, you're not going to win. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Question, um, do, you, do you boys wear anything underneath your shorts? No. No. Neither. No. I wonder, oh, if, oh, I wonder if people do. Yeah. I I've, I've got never a good story with this. My first ever show, I was walking up some stairs to go like up to the stage and one of the guys stopped me when he went, have you got your underwear on? I was like, yeah, of course I've got my underwear on, you idiot. I mean, you don't wear your underwear. Is that? Oh, it looks like I'm the idiot. <laughs> so literally, about to go on stage, whip my shorts off, get my cock out, and then shorts back on. <laughs> Turns out all the judges saw my penis, and that's probably why I won. But you know, <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, because they 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 they, 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 they like you went out of sympathy, mate. <laughs> It was cold, okay? Yeah, yeah if you're yeah. listening and you're thinking, oh, do I wear do I wear underwear? No, you don't wear underwear. And also don't get your cock out in front of everyone. Yeah. You know? Have a bit of class. When you get your tan done, what do you wear? Do you wear boxes or do you wear a sock? I wear boxes. Thank you. Good. Tom sock. wears a sock. Yeah, I, sock. I don't understand it. You leg on me. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I like to get the photo of his glutes. Oh. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like I like the feeling of like the, the gun as well, just like oh, yeah. Over my crotch area, it's quite nice, you know. Like after you've after you've gone through weeks and weeks and weeks of zero stimulus, or you know, it's just nice to have a little something, you know. What spray up your ass crack? Yes. Did I tell you last week on the podcast about the toilet in London? No. Oh, so I went. I went. I went to a nice <laughs> hotel, and the toilet. So the toilet were like from the twenty eighth century. It was heated. It had oh. like settings so you could change the position of the toilet seat. Very, very weird. And then it also had a, a sprinkler system. Oh. oh, what? To wash you after? To wash you after. And I was just like, oh, what? what's this do? Like, I, I wanted to turn the heat up and instead I turned the water on and and I was fully relaxed and I got water full on shot straight up. Was it powerful? It was powerful enough to make me nearly jump through the wall. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I don't know about that. A loud yelp. Quick one as well, like on shorts. I don't know. Like, for me as well, like your shorts, you should be matching your shorts away from the background of what it is. Mm. Like PCA, if you're wearing like, sometimes I find blue shorts against a blue background doesn't look great. Yeah, true. It can sometimes fade out a little bit. But that's, mm. that's just me. No, no I, I, you got I, you're right. Have you guys got any weird stories from tanning? Um, hmm. Tanning. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing that you've seen? I've seen two people nearly fight each other. Oh. I've seen, yeah, I've seen like animosity in a tanning area. Not like, I haven't seen a full on fight there. Oh, PCA Hull, um, Yorkshire, just last year. Uh, there were two blows. One was like quite clearly not going to win and then the other one potentially could have won. And the one that was like clearly better was like properly trying to intimidate the other guy. So he like jumps in front of him in the queue and uh, the, the shorter, smaller guy who wasn't in shape at all full on was like, mate, I don't care who you are. I'll spark you the fuck out. <laughs> and genuinely, everyone were like, guys, can we can we all just be friends now, please? We're all here to do a bodybuilding show. And yeah, yeah, that was a fun time. Jesus. No, I, I, saw, I, I saw Joe Gillen in the tanning thing as well. That was fun. Joe Gillen's a funny character. Uh, yeah, we love Joe. We yeah. love Joe. I, bet, I, bet, I bet he was just walking around, like tapping everyone on the shoulder and then flexing his glutes. Like, yeah. Hey, oh, no, hey, 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 look at my ass. <laughs> we love you, Joe. Uh, it was at a UK DFA competition. He was doing men's physique. And ultimately, he was the most peeled guy up there. But he also didn't pose that great. And he placed last. And his face was fuming. And I remember I remember speaking to Tim about him. Mm. And I said, mate, like, he was easily, easily the best up there. If he could pose, he would have been absolutely fine. 
Did, but, so, did, do, do, think you think, like, do you think if he worked on his posing, he could actually look good in men's physique poses, though? I think he's gone to. I think he's more. I think he's suited to bodybuilding more. If I'm being honest, especially natural bodybuilding. Um, yeah, but I feel like with him, <laughs> he's just. Uh, I think which uh, Joe knows. I, I love him to pieces, but I think sometimes he speaks before he thinks in his head. And like at the at the UK FBA show, there was a literally a prime example of where he was like, "It's supposed to be bodybuilding. We're supposed to be in shape, and all these guys are fat." And it's like, <laughs> his the guy who won the class was also coached by Tim at the time. Oh dear! So it's just like, was that Dal? Joe is Joe is a good guy. He is a nice guy. I do oh, but, but, uh, the, the thing is that when you're Joe, you can pretty much call anyone fat, can't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? He makes kids in Africa look fat. He might not have said that. He might have said not in shape, but it's, it's, he meant the same thing. Shit, Josh, like, Josh, Josh just single-handedly dismantled the YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, I think I've just got us cancelled. <gasps> whoops it is <laughs> oh, well. Fine next week with a different name, guys. It's just banter. It's yeah. banter. It's, it's the and B. Yeah. Banter. Banter. And banter. Um... Biggest pet peeves when it comes to board shorts, Maka? Uh, just loose shorts. Can't stand them. Okay. Okay. Loose Biggest short. pet peeves when it comes to posing? Uh, <laughs> sounds silly, but not just not practicing or not like taking that feedback on board. Um, also, people who think, like, for example, like you'd think that I, I, won't, I wouldn't have a posing coach because I know it all in quotation marks, right? I, when I prep, I would still be getting posing from people I trust. Yeah, I'm still getting feedback from people I trust because you can never learn too much. Um, so, like for me, like I learn a lot from. Do you know Omar Ventura? You ever yeah. heard of him? I learned a lot from him. Um, I also had a couple of lessons from Gerald. I had a lesson from Sean Carroll, who's an IFB pro. Doesn't really do much work anymore, but was coached by Omar at the time as well. But even like then, like I, I just think if you're thinking you're a know-it-all, nine times out of ten, you're going to get found out. And I think sometimes when you're in a prep scenario, like for myself, when I hope for prep later this year, you're going to get to a point where your mind is doing tricks on you. You're, like, you're not thinking clearly. So you might think that your posing looks amazing, but if someone can just make a small tweak and you've got to be open to criticism at that point, that potentially is going to make you win shows or place better, then you, you should be taking that feedback on. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, like biggest pet peeve, I also think it's... Like <laughs> telling me you're practicing and I can clearly see you're not. Mm. Like Tom, I knew every time we had a session, this session's gonna be easy because Tom is just I've never seen someone move like Tom has. Tom's been probably the cleanest pose I've ever had. Mate, I said I said it when we had Kez on. Tom has ten pounds of personality. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, but it's funny, right? But that's what posing is about. Like it's about yeah. personality and confidence to the stage. It makes a huge difference to the way you look on stage. It, like like uh, like you were saying there, Josh. Like it adds like almost like ten pounds of muscle to their physique because they're posing so much better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just definitely that. Like, just if you're telling me you're practicing, you're not practicing. Just be honest and say, oh, I've had a shit week or whatever, and we can move on. Nice. Yeah. M- Maka, do you do it all online or do you do it in person um, as well? Uh, people come to me as well. Um, I also do online, but I also offer hybrid. So like, some people come to me. They might buy a block, but they might have two in person and two online as well. Nice. Uh, where are you based? Watford. Watford in Watford. the UK. Watford. Ooh. South. Nice. Planning yeah. on doing a team meet up in a few weeks, mate, if you fancy coming down. Uh, it's that? it's in Daventry, which I don't think is too far away. Where's that? It's like that near Oxfordish. I shall be there. Tom will be there. Should we do should we do like a well Josh, this is your meetup? Yeah, like a, 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 a little a little posing workshop? Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I can, I can come down, help your boys out. I've got I've got quite a few boys stepping on the old stage this year. I think I've got 15 lads. Could, uh, bring um, your shorts if you want people on trial on. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring 10 pounds of personality and apply yeah. it to all of your boys. <laughs> Don't bring any more weight, Tom. Don't <laughs> yeah. bring any more weight. You've eaten <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring boys. 10 pounds of personality and 100 pounds of cookie dealers for everyone. <laughs> Okay, especially okay. you guys on prayer. What's your what's your favorite cookie dealer? Ooh, oh, it's, not cookie dealer, is it? it's uh Cookie Champions. Is it? What? They changed their name. Yeah, they changed. Oh, their name. I had yeah. to unfollow it, mate. I've unfollowed them. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I spent way too much money on them. Once you go to Cookie Box, you'll never go back. Oh, no. Maka, stop getting Tom onto food. <laughs> okay. cookie Is it Cookie Champions? Oh, he's, lo- he's searching it up now. Oh, guys, uh, honestly. I'm going to have to order again. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the shakes. <laughs> the red velvet one is fine enough. Oh, the red velvet one is good. Or the carrot cake one. Have you, Josh, have you ever had them? No. What do you have post show? What's your thing? What's my thing? Pints. Don't just say cream or ice. Don't be one of those guys. I hate cream or ice. Thank God, someone. Oh, I can't stand Maka, you. you too. I know Annabella won't listen this far into the podcast. <laughs> my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. It's not anything. Mm. I liked. I just like to go out for a little meal, yeah, and get absolutely spangled. <laughs> what would you just have there? No, 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 no. You get something. What? No. <laughs> See, Tom. Josh likes a few knows. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I'm joking. Right. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um. But yeah, he just likes pints. They are Erdinger. I like Erdinger. I quite like your approach to to volleyball, Josh. To be fair, thank you, mate. What is my how approach? <laughs> there could be so much more happiness in bodybuilding, and so many more happier people if they just took a leaf out of Josh's book in terms of how he's relaxed in terms of like a prep setting, going on holidays. Um, you know, like I, I, tell me if I'm wrong, but you like you eat the same foods, but you're a little bit more relaxed with your approach to food, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think like, I'm I'm like that myself, so I resonate with that a lot. But I also think some of these people who live and die by their meals on plan, I think have potentially a, a, an issue once they stop bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I find them people they have shorter bodybuilding careers and more yeah. damaging bodybuilding careers. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of people enter the sport and then just leave. Yeah, um, it becomes too consuming. I've got bones pick you, Josh. Friend, I always do. I, I do it if it fits your macros, but I just I do eat the same meals. Like yeah. I have egg whites and bacon and stuff. But if I, if I fancy something different, it just gives me the opportunity to remove that. Yeah, mm. yeah. So. Um, that's that's a hundred percent it. Like I've got clients start prep already, and I'm already saying to them like, look, don't be afraid of like you know eating this or eating that, switching this meal, switching that. And I think I think it'll end up leading to better results at the end and then also like in years to come because they're going to come back and they're going to they're going to do more preps yeah I tom agree. what was the bone that you've got to pick with me i heard you say it what's up so i was listening to the uh a, maybe a rival podcast <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i was listening i listened to it all right and my name mm-hmm. was mentioned and you said i had four four burgers <laughs> <at> five guys <laughs> Why? Uh, it, 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 like so, like I the the the, 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 the the first time I am spoken about, probably on you know the once you're in you're in podcast I'll, podcast. podcast. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll shout them out. You wow. said that I eat off plan all the time. You went to Five Guys with me. I had four burgers. Like how is supposed to be my friend, man? Put me in a bad light like that. Just just because I like. A little off plan meal every now and then. Every now and then is every other day. It's coincidental. It's if my when... session begins with a P, I'm having an off plan meal. Push, <laughs> pull, <laughs> legs, push to, pull, and then for some reason he started training palms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't have a. If I have an off plan meal on legs, they grow too much and that's just not fitting for the category, is it? You know, so. <laughs> True. <laughs> Pressed day. I'm gonna start including a posing session in there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I uh, before I jumped on a, a posing call with Maka, I'd always have. That's why you missed something like washed. Water. Yeah, yeah. That was exactly what I mean. <laughs> Honestly, we're going. Oh, look at this edema, edema in my face. It's like no, mate. Honestly, that edema. I don't even like it. Post show at Tom. When WMBF, your face after literally like an hour post show. Oh. It was fucking ridiculous. I I, I had swelling my face from smiling on stage. Like, just from the stress of being on stage, my face just went boof. And I was like, well, I look like shit already, so I'm just going (laughs) to smash this cookie cookie dealer. And this one. one. Tom, you know know what I'm going to say? 
what it's that, it's that ten pounds of personality, mate. It is, mate. It well, is. I could straight to the cheeks. I could no. I could genuinely feel my cheeks, like my face <laughs> getting like was on stage. Bad. Yeah, it wasn't good, but it's what it is. For for that show, I literally ate like zero carbs for like that was over a, long, a day. That was a long day. Yeah, it was a long day, mate. But there we go. Um, we're an hour in, boys. We got some questions to go through as well. Oh, nice. I like a long podcast. Okay, Josh, you did. Maka, did you get any questions? Oh, I've got a couple, I think. I didn't get any. I didn't put a questions box up. That was really relevant. I'll be honest, I thought it was Sunday when I woke up this morning. Right, I've got one while Maka is pulling up his questions. Um, from Alfie Fitness 17, my man, Alfie. If you were all sentenced to death row, what would what would it be for and what would your last meal be? So what would you get sentenced to death row for and what would your last meal be? Uh, mine will Josh, be mine will be for killing Joe Van Essen so that I am the best men's physique natty in all of Britain for the rest of time. And my last meal would be <clears throat> an Erdinger for starter. <laughs> Nice, nice pint. And then um, probably go... Well, we've done this before, haven't we, Tom? No, 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 no. So Erdinger, mate, you get a drink of it anyway. It doesn't class. All right, Erdinger is my drink. Starter, pasta, an antipasti. <laughs> Main course, pizza, dessert. I'm going to go jam roly-poly this time. Jam roly-poly. Roly-poly. Interesting. Maca. Maca. What would I cause? I'd probably kill someone by having a seizure at the wheel. <laughs> oh, now. I mean... uh, <laughs> and then what would I have? Uh... For some reason, I've just bro, bro, envisaged no, no, no. the you real you would... in years to come. <laughs> you wouldn't go to death row for that, mate. Come on. No, that's dead that... already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably true. I'll be in. I'll be in a what's it called? Intensive care. Um, I would have. I think nachos would be my starter. I do like some nachos. Okay. My nachos, though, like not just some shitty restaurant ones. All right. Yeah, I'd make some banging nachos. Honestly, I, I'm envisaging like proper weather spoons nachos. Oh no, no, these are like four different cheeses: feta cheese, chicken, chorizo, two layers of crisp with cheese on top. Sour guac, salsa, even nacho chili cheese sauce as well. I can imagine how your two posing sessions went. Just You're a, talk about food. But I could, I could see the like the little bit, little bit of food focus in Mac's eye there. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, and then I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd match Josh. I'll have a pizza. Oh, pizza's just the best food, isn't it? And okay. then, um, dessert. Oh, dessert. What would I have for dessert? I think it's got to be a biscuit for cheesecake or something. Hey. I was just going to say, you're going to go for another cheese round here. You, you won't need to be shot dead. You'll just, you know, <laughs> die of cheese overdose. What was his middle name? Dairy Lee. <laughs> so, <clears throat> for me, I think I would get put in prison for m- mass death in a theatre for overwhelming everyone with my personality on stage. <laughs> Okay. Smile. Yeah, just I just killed everyone with kindness. All right. the judges just ah, oh, they couldn't take it. Right, just blasted them away with it. Um, and then my starter, my starter would be cheesy garlic bread with a sweet chili dip. Not. Oh yeah, I see what you. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had that before? So was it garlic cheesy? Like a cheesy garlic baguette with mm. a sweet chili start or with a sweet chili dip, unreal, right? Mm. Then I would have from a little place in the southwest called the Copper Dollar Inn, half cauliflower cheese, half steak and ale pie. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, it's called a Copper Dollar pie, and then just ice cream and warm brownie for dessert. When you when you go out to restaurants, do you guys have desserts as well, or are you like starters and mains? I'm a starter and a main. I'm a main in a dessert. 
I'm going to start a main and dessert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, will you will you always get a pint with your food? Um, do you know what? I probably would now. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it just helps, you know, just bring me down a bit. Chill me out. Uh, if not, I'll probably go like Diet Coke or Coke Zero. Could it, do you two have like a preference between Diet Coke and Coke Zero? Pepsi Max all day. Pepsi Max? Mm. Coca-Cola. Wow. 100% Coca-Cola. Zero. Max just tastes better in my opinion. But if it was Diet Coke or Coke Zero, I think they're pretty similar. Mm. I don't think that's too much. I, I For some reason, I don't like Diet Coke, but Coke well, Zero. Well, it's a bit watery. Maybe that's it. It's just not quite cokey enough. I think Coke Zero is a little bit sweeter, to be fair. Tom, any more good questions? Training ex- from Rich P- Rich underscore Powell underscore fitness. Oh, he training, loves a question. <clears throat> training at 6am on Cyclic Dextrim and EAAs instead of He's asked me this thoughts. today. Okay, well, we can give him another answer. Uh, yeah, why not? Well, what, do you you have- what was the question? Was good. Training at 6 a.m. on cyclic dextrin and EAAs instead of a meal. What are your thoughts? If you've got literally zero time to digest a meal, then yeah, absolutely. I'm fine. And also have some electrolytes as well before you go. Yeah. Yeah. Like the main thing that's going to affect your training performance first thing in the morning, probably more so, is going to be dehydration than anything. Um, if, especially if you're like backloading like a decent meal in the evening, like Maca does, then usually you can get away with like even training faster in the morning. But if you want a little bit of extra, Summon, summon to give you some energy. Then uh, EAAs and cyclic dextrin is fine. Josh, what did you say to him? Uh, I said um, I would, I would go EAA, cyclic dextrin, and then maybe like an electrolyte as well. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Perfect. Um, from Josh underscore men's underscore nurse underscore physique, wishing a speedy recovery to this legend, and he can make it to the stage. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Appreciate that, mate. Bless him. I think I follow him actually. I think I know his, his name used to be Jose. He's oh, changed Jose. it to Josh. Oh, Kez posed him, I think. Yes, he did. He did. Yeah. Um, so we've got another question from Talbot Balf. Oh, here he is. Mr. <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> hey, um, he messaged me saying, please don't block me. <laughs> did he actually? <laughs> Well, Talbot, Talbot's even admitting, right? He hasn't got. He's not. He's not. He's not bringing us the fire this week. To be honest, pretty boring this week. But if you could go back in the past, what would you change? What about ourselves? It no, just says if you could go that. back in the past, what would you change? Oh, so God. I guess just in your life, is there anything you'd change? <clears throat> get get the one. I probably wouldn't have. Uh, I would have cared less a lot sooner. I think when I was younger, I, tr- I tried too much to impress people. Um, like even like with little things at school, like what what type of clothes I'd wear. And I wish now, like now, I'm I'm very much like I just I just do me. I just don't care what anyone thinks of me. Um, I wish I did, um, I was like that a lot sooner. That's what I'd say. But then I also think everything happens for a reason. You know, you are where you are because of what you did in the past. So probably not. Mm. I respect that. I'm similar. Like it's just is what it is isn't it you know i wouldn't really change much about my past i wouldn't say i've really had touch wood anything like significantly like awful happened to me so i wouldn't really change anything man like i probably wouldn't be here if i didn't make some of the mistakes that i made cool dude right i've got one that's come to mind but it is a little bit morbid go on then right so when i was 16 one of my best friends was terminally ill and he had like a birthday party and I remember, like, clear as day, he asked me, he was like, oh, Josh, let's go and get a photo quick. And, I, and then for some reason, I was like, oh, no, mate, I've, I've got to go. And I left. And then literally, like, three weeks later, he died. Oh. So, like, do you know whenever, like, I think, oh, what would I change? That is the only thing that I would change. But I think that happening has, like, made me, you know, kind of want to take as many opportunities as possible now. Mm. 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 Well, yeah, prep- so there we go. Just a nice way to it's, it's, impress everyone. It's that what if thing, isn't it? Yeah. You never know. You just never, you never know. know. That's you, ne- you never know. Don't get me wrong, like, the season's not like as bad as terminally ill, but it, it just makes you appreciate what you've got, for sure. And 
like I said, like grabbing every opportunity whilst you can is definitely the best best course of action to take. That's just one of those things though, Josh. It's like you were to never to like obviously like you knew obviously he wasn't well, but like you were never to know. Yeah. You know? But now silver lining of that situation as shit as it was it's like you have an appreciation for the little things like something as seemingly mundane or small or minor as that in the grand scheme of things to you now is like a fucking big thing and it's like yeah. etched into your memory something just that small so it's like even the smallest things in life like do mean a lot sometimes you know yeah. you've got to appreciate that now and that's the silver lining for you you can go throughout the rest of your life now which is hopefully long and prosperous and uh appreciate little things mate Thanks, Tom. You're right. Yeah, I like I like it. I, I feel like you're like you, you had a deep answer to that and mine was just like, nah, I wouldn't change anything. My life's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking legend. I wouldn't change me for the world. Do, do, do you know what I would <laughs> do you know what I would do, do, do you know what I would change? I would have uh would have started training arms harder like five years ago. <laughs> I would have and cars. started training earlier. <laughs> Maybe maybe that's what I would do. Just train harder a little bit earlier. Take the gym mm. a little bit more seriously. I think because when I started the gym, I just uh, well, I think I joined when I was like nineteen, eighteen, and I just train and then go get kebab afterwards. That's optimal nice. though. That's that's the Krogan approach. That's oh, perfect. When I first started, I was a rake, like a skinny little boy. How, mu- how much did you weigh? weigh? Sixty four kilo. Oof, twelve kilos heavier than me when I first started. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. How much? What? Uh, quick maths. So, what was you? Fifty. Go on. Fifty-six. No, you spaz. Fifty-two. Fifty-two. You were fifty-two kilo. Yeah, mate. You how old, you, how, that how old did you when you started training? Like twelve. Sixteen. You were fifty-two kilo. At sixteen. Jesus, what was you like? Looked, five foot I ten. Horrific. Did you play football? Yeah. Yeah. Us, similar to me. Yeah. So, like, what was you? What was you? A goalpost or something? <laughs> <laughs> I was a striker. I was rapid. Yeah, so was I. Oh my god, Maka, we could we could have played together. I just I played ping pong. One hundred meters in like ten nine five or something. Oh my god! Yeah, I ran at nationals. Did you? Yeah. Where at? Where, what stadium was it? Uh, I was the Kent. Whatever the Kent ground is. Jesus. I, I used to, I don't know if it were like school games, it used to be in Gateshead. Quite quite good. Wow. I used to do the high jump. There's a guy who um, I sprinted with who beat me, but he played for like Aston Villa as well as a striker. Wow. <laughs> like, what are you doing here? Yeah, oh. well, I had, not, I had 99 woodcut and a RuneScape, so, you know. I don't know what, I never played RuneScape. That's a regret. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Good Actually, one. I'm Go. going to change my regret. I wish I, I wish I played RuneScape more. Um, did you play World of Warcraft? You ever play that? No. So I played that for a little bit, but that was too. That game was too in depth after a while. I used to play Habbo Hotel. Did you ever yeah. play? Oh, that? you didn't. <laughs> you played Habbo Hotel. What was that game? Club Penguin as well. Club Penguin. Club yeah. Penguin. Do you remember? Do you, right. Do you, do you guys remember Mini Clip? Yeah. Yeah. Mini Clip was unreal. Is that school thing? thing? Probably. I think, I don't know. Go on, anyway, Tom, you're, you're quick on the fingers. Mini clip. Quick on the fingers. Like, you know me, mate. You know me. Mini clip. It's still a thing. <laughs> no way. Well, that's my night sorted. <laughs> I've got one more check in to do, and then my day's done. And then mini clip. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love I'm it. Brilliant. Right. Well, anyway, we're uh, we're an hour and 15 minutes in. Should we leave it there, boys? Yeah, that's buddy. One question if you want to end it on this. Go on in, go on in. Yeah, I forgot to ask. Sorry, sorry, Maka. Uh, who's one pro and one amateur? Us three think could be so much better if you taught them how to pose. In a natural, just it, okay. It's a pro and, and amateur. And I'm trying to. Th- I can't really think when you're top of my head. Um, there's a know? go on, British. I I I don't pay that much attention, not as much attention as probably what I should to the IFBB Pro League. Because mm, you know, it's not like oh, good pose, especially within the top fifteen. Ryan Terry's posing used to suck, but now he's pretty good. It works yeah, it does, it works for his physique now, which is good, mm-hmm. which is ideal, which is what you should do. Um, yeah. Um. 
So Lewis, Lewis had a client that I believe did men's physique. Um, l- I don't know if it was last year. Oh, I think I know you're going to say. I don't think he's competing anymore, but he competed last year and he was unreal. Like, unreal. But I don't mm-hmm. think his posing was up to scratch. Oh, David, the black guy. Yes. Oh, yeah. The guy he was yes. unreal. Do you know what, Josh? Yeah. You know, me and you were sat together and we just saw that back shot and we were just like, hey, what the fuck was that? Do you remember that? Right. <laughs> I, Tom, have you ever sat with Kez in a show? No. Right. I reckon four times per show, Kez will look at someone and go, that's best physique I've ever seen. That's best physique <laughs> I've ever seen. Let's go, shut up. And he came out and I thought, that is the best physique I have ever seen. He was unbelievable. He, yeah. uh, I think he would beat Joven personally. Dear, I, I, I don't. I haven't seen, to be fair, I haven't seen Joven since he last competed. So, I, I don't, I don't. Did you, David Locke. did you go and watch him at the Worlds? No, I see. I didn't see. Him. I just saw him at that, that one regional. So you know when he went up against people that like a you know. Higher standard of a higher standard, he didn't look as amazing. It was just he yeah. looked, he looked of like he looked godly relative seen, to the lineup. Have you seen Joven now? Yeah, now he's being coached by Zach. He looks phenomenal. Absolutely. I think he's. Do you know what? Right, I'm not. I'm not being harsh. I think he's always. I think he's looked the same probably for the past like six months. I don't. I've. Because he took quite a long time off after he won that sh- won everything he won. <laughs> after he won everything, everything. <laughs> I think even he put on Instagram like just p- putting a post up to show people I'm not just like gone back into the background. Um, but yeah, Joven's one of the best I've ever seen. He needs bigger doubts. And like, if I'm if I like, I can't I can't shit on him because like he could. Yeah, Joven could play. Like, I think Joven could play better. I'm trying no. to see if he needs bigger doubts. His, his, frame, his frame is so freaky, it kind of not that it doesn't matter, but he does get away with it. Yeah. Um, but again, if he was up against like really high tier athletes like yourself, um Tom. <laughs> Why is that funny, Josh? <laughs> Why do you pay? Why is that funny, Josh? His backdrop's amazing. His, his, his arms, man. His arms are ridiculous. His I still doubts. do. Th- I still do think his arms are a little bit oversized for his doubts. His doubts are crazy, right? But his arms are that nuts. Mm. Yeah, he can. He, he'll obviously do very well when he competes again. Yeah, I th- I'm not sure what shows he's actually doing. Is he going? I think he's going for his IFB Pro card, isn't he? I think he's really? doing shows at the back end of the year. So yeah. I would imagine it's going to be IFBB. Yeah. Um, but that yeah. that would be an individual that I would like to get on the podcast. I've said it before. We just need to line it up. I think. Get him on. But yeah. Anyway, so amateurs for me would be D Lock. He was called David Lock. Is it David? I think David. Yeah, Lock that's who we two. were talking about, mate. Yeah. Can't I'm happy to go with that. Yeah, I can't think of many other amateurs. Pros. Pros. Me. Pros. Pros. You think you pose better? I think my posing's not. I don't think my posing's bad. I don't think it's great, but I've always been of the assumption that, like, if your physique's decent, then you're going to do better than if your posing's decent and your physique shit. Mm. Yeah. What, what would you What would you say is like your main weakness? Um, is it endurance through put like holding, or is it? I think I think Josh could pose pose his back better. Yeah. As well as like, <clears throat> it's not even like you need a lot of muscle tissue there, mate. If you brought up a little bit this off season and then posed a little bit better, boom. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll see you next year. We'll see you next year. Yeah, we'll see when you're next next to me on stage with those back shots. That'll yeah. be the telltale sign. Yeah. No, no, we're doing a TCA show. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to take that pressure off for him, mate, and just we're going to just find another federation. <laughs> My face just swells up with uh, with nerves when I get on a WMBF stage. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> right, yeah. let's wrap it up here. Maka, let's go eat. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for spending the last hour and twenty minutes talking absolute nonsense with us. I appreciate it. I appreciate you for having me on. Our pleasure. You can come on again in the future. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Thank you for making some time in your in your eating schedule for for this podcast. I know, I know, you know, you're starving now. 
that's absolutely fine. Anytime cool. for the BSB yeah. community. Yeah, and yeah, thank you for listening, guys. We love you lots. Remember, BSB at the checkout at All In. There's a new launch coming Two tomorrow. Two what? Two days. Is, is it Friday? Friday. I think Friday. It's it two Friday. days time. And two it's good time. shit. It's good shit. BSB, not BSB 15, but BSB. Muchas oh, gracias. Yeah. Ciao, arrivederci. See you next week. Oh, and one more thing. If if you want some board shorts this this year for your competitive season, you know where to go. Legacy UK underscore on Instagram. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right. Catch you in a bit, people. Bye. Bye.